Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about Temple OS. Shut up, bird. Um. So you, you have uh, two terminal windows when it starts up, and then you have this uh, autocomplete window, which uh, <coughs> uh, as you type, um, if I say uh, make OS, okay, now it's showing a uh, a red a red. You can click on the red link link, or um, what's better. What's better is to uh, use the, key the keyboard. Um, you see, it says F F O one. That's uh, function key one. Um, there's if you hit if you hit function key one. Oh, what the? Oh, not what the? Holy! What did I do? Okay. Okay. If you hit um, control function key one, it auto completes. That's not what you want to do most of the time. Most of the time, you don't want to save typing. Shut up, bird. Control Shift F1. I know it sounds crazy, but uh, if you get if you get confused about the uh, the the keys, if you hold down Control Shift and Alt, you'll it'll it'll bring a menu up, and that says that. If you have uh, Shift F1, then it's the source code of the symbol. Oh, you're never going to remember this. Um, just click on the red link, and if you want to be a, pow a power user, be aware you can do some combination. Some combination, and that's how I do it. Control Shift F1. It's natural to me. Now, what is this? Most operating systems have documentation. Um, we we put the documentation right in the source code as much as possible. Um, I have a uh, a uh, design goal. In in Unix, you, you try to do one thing simply or something. God damn it, bird! Shut up. Anyway, I try to I try to limit jumping between files. So um, if you put the documentation right in the source code, this is your man page. This is your man page, sort of. There's actually another set of documentation. Okay, but this this is where the man page goes. And you know what? Um, you're supposed to be able to read code. It's kind of the purpose of this operating system. So just read the code. Sometimes. Maybe it's just me, but sometimes it's it's quicker. Um, answers your question. Anyway, it really is it really is simple. I hate that bird. Shut up, bird. Okay, my dearly beloved bird died. This one's okay, I guess. It's on my list. Okay, hit F one. F1 is a uh, help index. This is the other source of documentation. So um, this is probably better documentation. So it has now in here. This gets you back to the source code. These these will bring you right back to the source code. So one of the one of the okay. So one principle is. Don't jump around to files. I want to put everything in. Um, if we go to one of the uh, doll doc demos, this will blow your mind. Okay, what does this program do? We hit F5. It's a it's a menu, and we have we have a graphics symbol here. We have. Uh, uh, 
Okay, so um, normally there's smoke and mirrors to, to put graphics in source code, but as a matter of fact, let's dump this file and see. It's a if it ends in .c, it's um, got file compression. Um, individual files are compressed. Anyway, this will uncompress it. The operating system loads whole files almost exclusively. So this is the file. Um, this was written from scratch. Um, ASCII is 7-bit signed. Isn't that stupid? That's the standard. We 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 have 8-bit, so we have uh, Control Alt A. You can use the pi character. You can use the other Greek letters, um, theta and stuff like that. So we have 8-bit. Use them. They're they're there to be used. It, it'll be. It won't be portable, but I don't really want anything ported one way or the other. If it should be written, that's kind of my. Anyway, if if you already have a program that works in Windows, use it in Windows. There's no reason to bring it into here. This is low resolution. The whole purpose is kind of like amateur graphics. Um, but that's more fun. It's more fun if you ask Bill Gates. Bill Gates will tell you, when we were young, we programmed in 6502 assembly. You're so lucky you get to do 100 fonts in HTML. Then ask Bill Gates, what would you rather do, HTML or 6502 assembly? He goes, well, I'm a lot smarter than you. So, <laughs> anyway, he's, he's not a very, uh, he's a... Uh, He's making the cattle. He's turning the world into cattle. That's, he doesn't see anything wrong with making a world full of cattle. Anyway, that that's awful. Why, why do you want a world full of cattle? Anyway, uh... So this has graphics and source code. The graphics are stored at the bottom. Now let's pretend you wanted to add some text to the file. You would have to shift all these graphics downward. And that, my friend, is why we don't have a, uh, a uh, uh, standard F open, F close. A lot of people, when they, when they come across my uh, file open, file close, they will uh, they will see my F open. Actually, at the moment they do have grow, but that is that is uh, we're going to make Microsoft support Red Sea file system. The file system itself is simplified and does not allow and only allow only allows full file full file read writes. If you read and write the whole thing, it's not really a problem. And that's kind of how we operate. So what we do is we cherry pick. Um, instead of instead of being another Linux, we say, what if we took the, the sorts of things that a Commodore 64 was used for, and we, we cherry pick and just do those things. So you're not going to serve a big database. You, you we don't have networking. We're not trying to. Uh, um, as a matter of fact, um, I could tell you about the Red Sea file system. Uh, okay, let's, I got nothing better to do. Um, drive report. Drive report is a command. I went ahead and uh, st standardized the uh, the drive letters are kind of like Windows DOS. Um, I standardized C and D and E and so, so forth for hard disk. T, starting at T is uh, CD-ROM, DVD, and B, A and B are uh, A and B are RAM disks. So if we keep them um, standardized, uh, there's one less thing to worry about. In other words, 
Drive C is always a hard disk. Um, anyway, so what I'm going to do is I have a RAM disk, Drive B, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, you can hit Control D to get to the file manager. The file manager is a death trap. I'm just telling you. The file manager is a death trap. You have The problem is you have these little zones that's just the way it goes with the uh, the font. If you use a mouse, it's not very easy. So here's what I'm going to do. Here's the drive B. Now the neat thing is this control D, um, you can hit that anywhere. Let's say you're browsing in source code. Let's say you're down here in some source code. You can hit control D, pow, now you're in the file manager. Hit F1, pow, now you're in the... now. I'm going to hit control B for um, border and this little uh, alongside the side here this tells you um, how many levels you've pushed in to the editor uh, so um, we're in the editor there's a uh, file manager task there's another editor and there's a terminal so if we hit shift escape it pops us out pops us out so it's kind of like browsing deeper and back somebody suggested I change it to um, forward and backward but um, let me so the uh, the uh, the keys are explained here space is like left click enter is like right click F1 is help control M personal menu this is what you always this is forward and back uh, or back and save but I don't have forward and back because there's save and then there's abort um, when you're in the editor, sometimes you want to save it. Now, as it turns out, um, I don't really uh, write protect. Um, if you hit the F1 help, um, you can, if you're browsing the documentation, it's not write protected. So you're welcome to, well, in other words, you can corrupt the documentation. Um, it's Just be aware. That's kind of how we operate. Um, so, uh, um, Anyway, so uh, Control D is the uh, file manager. You can pop to that. Now I'm going to go to my home directory and copy it. So I use, uh, everybody else uses Control V, Control C, Control X. But for some reason I got used to Shift Insert. It does do Control V, Control C, Control X. But I, I, I don't do it. I don't know why I do it the weird way. Anyway, so I just copied and pasted my home directory onto the RAM disk. Now let's go look at the RAM disk. Uh, so we do a drive report. It doesn't tell us how much is full. It tells us the block range. For You can see with the hard disk partitions, the first partition starts at 3F. That's for bootloaders. Um, and uh, then the second partition ends or the first partition ends there, second partition. So uh, let's look at the RAM disk. We have, uh, um, I don't know what that is, a million? We have a million blocks. Um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and say drive. Now the change directory, um, lets you change drives as well. That's just a tip. So I'm going to say B colon slash home. Now we're here. Hit directory. So this is the RAM disk. So I can corrupt this and it, it doesn't matter. I can even, I could even make it so messed up it wasn't readable and it wouldn't really hurt anything. Um, if I got the base address of the memory for the RAM image that's the sort of thing you're encouraged to play with. Anyway, uh, let's let's do that. Uh, oh, never mind. Okay, so I do a directory. There's the mask. Then if you say true to the, uh, that's it's kind of like uh, ls minus l, but um, you can hit con Control Shift F1. Oops, Control Shift F3. 
biomask and then a boolean for full and this this will give you the full date full time and then it says clusters on a uh, on a standard IBM PC you have well on a fat 32 you have clusters so what they do is they put together multiple blocks a block is what the hardware uses a cluster is what the software abstracts they they try to they make it more complicated it's kind of like virtual memory and physical memory it's a, one of those abstraction things I try to get rid of the abstractions because our goal is teenagers or something and so uh, the current directory is at this cluster as a matter of fact with the Red Sea it's a block not a cluster it's 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 like it's extra simple um, it's super simple so we say dump block 0x there's the block now as a matter of fact you can you can read and write blocks if you say true I do believe that's we can check the parameter I know that's what it is now it's gonna um, when we hit escape it's gonna save it or if we hit shift escape as abort okay so you can see it says it's not very obvious it's kind of a weird way to operate but we're at the command line and it's waiting for an escape so this is these are the direct the directory entries are perfect and simple fixed length perfect for kids that you can't get it any simpler and um, Budweiser it's, so I just changed a file name I'm gonna hit escape and uh, that saved it it's kind of weird now let's uh, let's do a directory oh we we had crap on the line anyway so it says Budweiser so we just directly changed the that's the this should blow your mind you should say oh that's how directories work it's a block on the disk and it has a it we could look at the directory and we could talk about what's here um, there's a um, all of the uh, headers are in uh, all of, all of the uh, all of the includes. Okay, I'm on the wrong drive. Okay, uh, let's go home. Home brings you back to your drive. Your there's this brings us back to C, the one we booted. Now let's go to the kernel directory and kernel HPP these are the header files there's a faster way uh, I'm gonna go to the C directory C directory entry there's a faster way this is what I was trying to tell you about if you say C and you know what you're looking for oh we could look in the help anyway C directory entry control shift so look at this uh, this has these fields are directly bulk copied onto the disk these others are uh, temporary in memory so there's at there's a 16 byte attribute 16 bit attribute there's a name a fixed length and you have to have a terminator that's because we directly copy a lot of people will think it's um, outrageous to store a terminator on there and waste it but you have to have a terminator um, cluster size and then our date time we have our own proprietary date time that's based on the year 0 AD Unix time is based on 1970 we have a 64 bit date based on date time based on it's uh, 32 bits of date and 32 bits of time um, so what it works out to is uh, uh, it's like 49 thousandths of a second resolution 49 thousandths of a second and um, if you, if, anyway it's you can add in, in, in you can add one to the 32 bit mark if you add one to the 32nd bit 
the upper 32 bits, then it, it advances one day, and the base day is, uh, is, uh, so let's go ahead and, uh, see, I'm going to go ahead and jump to here, and just to be handy, I'm going to copy that, and then I'm just going to control shift, there's a bunch of crazy key combinations, I know them, okay, I just wanted to shove that there so we can look at it. Uh, so let's let's look at these are directory entries. Directory entries have a one a one for the attribute uh, a ten a ten for the attribute. Once we get down to files, uh, I think what's the attribute going to be? You can pan, you can zoom the screen, Control Alt Z. You can do that anywhere, anytime. You can pan with Control Adobe Grab. That's what I call it. So I just grabbed it and moved it. Let's get this out of here. Um, better yet, let's go ahead and control shift. Let's go ahead and hit carriage return to move this over. Control shift enter. Damn it, what the hell. I want to hit, oh that's not what I wanted to do. How about control T? What if that might nuke it? I think that would nuke it. I don't want to do that. I screwed it up. So I'm trying to hit a carriage return to advance that stupid thing down the line. If I hit control T, it's going to mess it up. Anyway, um, so um, there's file. We could go over the fields. File name. Let's look for a cluster of a uh, cluster. So the date time is the last eight what's what else was there size so home home key plugin dot cpc um, so the last eight are the, the then there's the size this is the cluster this is one o one four f d one let's do a directory full and see what happens no we we changed directories okay so uh Drive. This takes a character, the drive command. Then we say dump block. What was that over here? You see what I'm 014FD1. 014FD1. Dump block 0x 014FD1. Now that looks compressed. As a matter of fact, that is compressed. On the disk, it's stored compressed if it has the dot Z. So um, this is our uh, LZW compression. Um, if you don't want it compressed, then what you have to do is, uh, so I'm going to go to the directory and uh, that was home home what was it home wrapper home home keyboard plugin. I'm gonna go ahead and copy to a name that does not have Z. If you're if you're interoperating with Windows, someday maybe Windows will support this compression and everything will be well anyway. So I just moved it to a name not ending in Z. Now if we do a directory star true okay so if we look at this it should not be compressed let's take a peek and see what it is okay that's what it is now I'm gonna dump dump block and look at that it's not compressed so uh, that's just ASCII 8-bit ASCII um, if you wanted to modify it do you remember how to do it you come up here say true and now we can modify you can I don't know what do we want to say Woohoo! hit escape and this my friend is what you no other operating system lets you do this this is cheap thrills like you did with a Commodore 
playing with fire, playing with all kids like campfires, all real men like block access. Let's see, it should say woohoo. Look at that, woohoo. We modified it directly. That is what you, you cannot get this experience from any other operating system. It, the I looked back at my Commodore 64 teenage years. I looked at what I what I found thought was fun, and that's what I came up with. Um, white kids actually enjoy doing this. Black kids they don't really like to program and stuff. Um, that's. I don't care. You're welcome to, but it's. I'm just saying it's not what they choose to do. They're out chasing girls and stuff. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, let's get God on the phone. F7. Belligerent apathy. Marquee stonewares. Okay, so now you get the idea of how it's possible for an operating system to do things that Windows and Linux cannot do. Windows and Linux cannot provide this. This is the entertainment of programming. This is what white kids like to do. You know, ask Bill Gates, do you like 6502 assembly? Well, sure. But I'm a lot smarter than you. Well, you're not smarter than all the white kids. There were anyway. Um, so the other thing it's good for is uh, hymns. Um, so these these hymns are these hymns are are not made with. Uh, I've never used a modern graphics animation. It's probably it's it's probably pretty sophisticated. The way my approach my approach to uh, making an animation is to write a program. Um, so I have hems. Um, the graphics go in the source code. You write a little program to uh, do the animation, and that's how we end up with offerings to God. Uh, so. <laughs> So uh, the task record, this is the, uh, there, you know, there's really not that much. This operating system is only a few, it's small. Once you realize how small it is, it should give you confidence and everything will start making sense. And uh, that's a goal is to keep it small so that you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So one of the... Uh, one of the core structures is a task record. The FS segment register points to a task record. So if I say FS RIP, that is the uh, the stored value of the um, of the uh, instruction pointer. Um, that is when it when it swaps this task out of run, so it's not running. Then it stores the the instruction point. We could actually make a task, start executing. Let's do that. We want to have cheap thrills. Let's go do that. So, um, control alt. Okay, control alt is E for es that's escape. That spawns a new task. Con uh, alt V is vertical tile. Um, you can customize these, obviously. Um, so, if you look up at the title bar, that's the, uh, the on, on Unix it would be PID, but we don't have that in direction. Uh, the PID is a number in Unix, but we save ourselves the, uh, I like to eliminate abstractions. I want it as simple as possible. And this is just the address of the task record. That's all it is. It's, that's the why we don't need a PID we have a, a task record address we don't have clusters we just have blocks 
We don't have virtual addresses, we just have physical addresses. We have a file system that allocates contiguous blocks. We don't have a fat table. A fat table is just like virtual memory. Anyway, uh, so uh, what were we going to do? By the way, you can say uh, control B, control Alt T. You can say X talk. This is kind of a joke. Back when there was RS-232 uh, crosstalk is when you had a bunch of wires and one person's conversation ended up on another person's uh, wire. So this is kind of a joke. There was a, there was a program called Crosstalk. I'm going to put some text into that tasks standard in. Okay, I just made him. I told him to do a directory. Now let's say, let's say he has an i64 i. There's all memory is accessible and there's no and everything is identity mapped. So if I say address a i, so this is the address of the i variable in this task. And if I go back over here. I can say i64 star. I, I put an underscore in a, when I do this, um, so I'm gonna. I made a I made a pointer to that i variable. Now if I say star i equals one two three. Now if I go back over here and I look at this variable, it's one two three. So. Interprocess communication is a joke. It's just do whatever the hell you want. It's all memory is accessible. An address, an address is an address. They, they never get changed. So a lot of people get confused because they see my stack, or they, they see the uh, the address of the. Uh, let's see this. Okay, it's not. They start thinking that it's uh, the Unix convention, um, but it's not. Um, Mem, the best way to explain this is these are. This is what the BIOS tells us is physical memory, and basically, um, this is also virtual memory. So, if one task has its stack at seven FFF, then another task cannot have its stack at seven FFF. As a matter of fact, none of the tasks choose that location. The stack is just allocated from anywhere. So the stack is anywhere. The an address doesn't really have much meaning except for the low the low two gig. Um, so I'm tired of talking. Let's go ahead. Let's see if we have some questions. So what can it do that Linux cannot do? It can offer cheap thrills like a white person teenager enjoys doing. When I got Linux way back in 1995 or something for a while, 96, 97, um, well anyway, one of the things in the back of my mind was looking at the code. But in 2004, when I looked at it, it was really, really complicated with lots of different architectures and lots of, it was really complicated. And I said, you know what? If I do an operating system, I'm going to make it super simple. I'm going to make, I'm going to make a rule, a law, that any distro has to be one architecture, one language. It has to be like a Commodore 64 for one, as simple as possible. Because if it's complicated, that's not doing what a Commodore 64 did. I want them to see the light at the end of the tunnel and one architecture, one language. That's not doing what a Commodore 64 did. I want them to see the light at the end of the tunnel and one architecture, one language. Okay. Let me tell you Someone wants to know about colors. Um, some uh, let me tell you a story. Um, at Ticketmaster, I had a an assignment to uh, to make a line regulator. We had a we had a problem with one of our printers. 
if the wall voltage at the facility was low, it wouldn't cut the tickets because it had a big solenoid. So we had to make a device. You can buy a device that um, um, adjusts the voltage out of the wall. Anyway, uh, so when I made that device, I, I thought, okay, I'm going to put a... I'm going to put a potentiometer to uh, to make to adjust the setting, um, but as it turned, he, my boss was against it. He, he didn't. It's it's better if it is not adjustable. Um, some you know a, a a person a fool a foolish person. Shut up, bird. A foolish person thinks that the more adjustments, the better. But if, if you look at the success of Apple, for example, um, they tried to keep it simple. And, um, you know, adjustment knobs are bad. When I'm, when I'm installing my operating system, the less questions I ask, the better. It takes a whole lot of work to get rid of a question. Just imagine if operating systems could figure out time zone. That would, that would take a lot of work and it's a whole lot easier just to ask the question. So as a matter of fact, uh, the tab key is eight, eight columns. Now you might say, why don't you make it adjustable? That is a bad idea. You need a king. Okay, you need a king. The tab key is eight columns. End of story. Uh, so the colors, you know, I first when I first made my operating system in 2004, I made it adjustable. I had these little commands for changing the colors. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to make them one set of colors, and that's what you get. You can, obviously, they're in, they're hard coded. If you, this is, search for light blue, document, document macro, document tree, doc, these are all the colors. Um, you can change them, but it's it's not they're not they're not really intended to be changed, as you can obviously see. I don't even know where the default alternate text default text. Okay, let's change this to red. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm just gonna make a uh, red. That what'll happen is it'll overshadow the previous. It won't give an error. Okay, so now I compile. And now we should have, uh, we might not have it here. No, okay. It's, the text is default red. We have another, okay, so if you want to, if you want, if you really want to go change colors, you're on your own. I don't really care. You're supposed to have fun messing with it. And if you make it unbootable, just reinstall it. Um, we're going to have it in a ROM. On the Commodore, you used to copy to a RAM, and then you could modify it. And uh, we're going to put it into a ROM on all on all x86 chips. Um, I don't need, you know, I don't remember if it had the potentiometer. I think it did. <laughs> I don't think I got rid of it. It's not easy to get rid of it. You need tolerances and all that. It's not easy. I think I had one, but anyway.